welcome back to the nursery and welcome to the cradle if you are new here i'm here with little miss baby olivia in her cute little vintage-esque outfit and i dressed her out on my last members live and they got to spend some time with little miss sassafras but also i wanted to show you guys something that my husband built mr cradles came up with something for my nursery and my members got to see it last weekend so i wanted to show you guys what is new in the nursery so mr cradles is very good with woodworking if you've been following me you already know that but he built me a little bakery so if you're wondering why i need a bakery um, in my room, it's because I use something called Genesis heat set paints. Yes, I still have mine. Yes, I have a ton of them. They have been discontinued, but a lot of us artists use different kinds of heat set paints and we have to bake the babies in the oven. I know that sounds terrible. Um, my son calls these my easy baby bake ovens. Um, if you're an 80s kid, you know, and so we do have to bake the doll kits in the oven. One. Oh, check that out. How cute is this? Number one, old world recipe baked fresh daily. Misty's Bakery established in 2016. I love this. Baked with love. And it says custom cakes, homemade cookies, pies, and muffins. Um, that should have all said dolls, but I did not design this at all. It was a total surprise. My husband came up with everything. He designed it. He came up with the idea. So, so I can turn on my ovens and bake when I need to. And he actually hooked this up to a vent. There's a fan in there that you can hear. Which, and this goes out my window to the outside. So he has it where it's open underneath and it can suck air from inside this room out. So it takes fresh air from in here and it pumps it outside through this fan up in here. So I can pull these out, I can put the kits in it, I can time them, like type in everything I need to, push them back inside, and look at this. The doors close on their own. So before I get started on today's topic, I know people have been asking me if I have any vinyl babies available in my store. I am working on it, guys. I have these two babies, and then I have two more coming up behind them. So Baby Willow is complete, and the Pearl Kit is complete. Now, both of these babies can be whatever gender you want. I think they would pass as either or, but I see this little baby as a boy, and I named him Pearson. He has almost like a reddish brown chocolate colored hair, which I absolutely love because I feel like this is gonna be like my little March baby, and he looks so Irish or Scottish or a mix. He's so cute. I think he's adorable. Um, I love this kit because you can see the little gums on this baby. But these babies are available. So if you're interested in either one of these little babies, look at little Miss Willow. She's so sweet. So we are going to do a change and chat with another little baby. Oh, he's so sweet. I just need to go grab the outfit. I washed a bunch of outfits for babies that are gonna be potentially going home shortly. And I just wanna make sure those outfits fit. So let's get going. Okay, so I do have Little Miss Squishy Silicone Baby Courtney joining us on today's video. I've only seen this little baby uh, in like pinks and creams and I found a cute little lemon outfit that I wanna send her home in. So I'm hoping that she'll look really cute in it. I wanna make sure it fits her. I wanna make sure she looks cute in it before I send her home in that. Um, she is still available. She's not going home just yet. I'm trying to figure out her wardrobe for her box opening, but she is available on my website. If you're interested, I'll leave it down below. It's also in the description. Um, I do have three little squishy 
squishies and I am shopping for them currently to have everything ready for their box opening for when they go home to their new families. So um, you can check them out with all their photos. I do have their photos all listed on the website. Um, so I did have these little Carter's booties already for other little lemon outfits that I have for other babies. Somebody sent those to me and they were super cute. But I, but I did find this cute little Carter's outfit. It's a three piece set with little pants and a onesie that has a little lemon on it. So um, I wanna see how she'll look in that. And then I have a couple of little bows to choose from. I'm not sure if I'm gonna put this beautiful little frilly lacy one on or this little bow would probably match pretty cute with it. But let's talk about prototype babies while we get her changed. So if you are new to Reborns um, and you don't know what a prototype is, when a sculpting artist creates a doll kit from clay and pours it into vinyl, they will usually create only like five initial vinyl kits, like five or six, and they will send them out to their favorite artists to paint various versions of them. So they want the babies to all look completely different. They want uh, a bunch of different artists to um, decide what they think those kits would look like when they are completed. They send in the photos of their completed work and then they will use those prototype photos to post on the doll supply companies website to advertise the pre-sale of that kit to artists like me. So I can see what that completed kit will look like in various forms and decide whether or not I think it's a cute kit and I want to buy the kit to paint myself and sell in my store to my customers. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so a prototype artist is basically an artist who uh, creates what they call prototype dolls, reborn dolls, and those dolls are used basically to advertise that kit for the sculpting artist. So when you are asked to be a prototype artist, it is a privilege. It is considered a huge privilege that a sculpting artist thought that you were such an amazing artist that they wanted you to paint one of their very first uh, doll kits for a doll that they sculpted. And it's an honor. So, so I do have a lot of people that write into me and say, hey, I found a prototype doll, but it is super expensive. And I don't know if it's worth thousands of dollars. What do you think? So here is my take on prototype dolls. Now, this is just my take on it. This is just my opinion on it. There are some amazing artists that have been out there for forever, since the beginning of Reborning, like 15, 20 years, right? Or more. And they are incredible. And sometimes those prototype dolls come out so incredibly hyper-realistic. They are so amazing. And especially if it's a kit that was done by an incredible sculpting artist or a very well-known, very popular sculpting artist. Um, some of my favorites, as you know, are Bonnie Brown, Cassie Brace, Laura Lee Eagles, amongst many others, Joanna Kazmerzak. Like I could name off like 10 of my favorite sculpting artists. Those are are some really well-known sculpting artists. And if you get asked to do a prototype by them, well, wow, go girl <laughs> or guy. Um, there are, there are uh, guys out there that are collecting Reborns and painting. So don't mean to leave the Reborn dads out of this or the artists because there are some amazing um, guys that get into this hobby and um, artistry as well. And I've seen some of their work and it's incredible. So, uh, Sorry about that for leaving those guys out. Don't mean to do that. Uh, but some of the prototype dolls, yes. Like it all depends on what kind of a collector you are. If you're a collector who only wants these 
super high-end prototype dolls that are very um, rare and unique, um, sculpted by a, maybe a specific artist that you absolutely love, um, painted by an artist that you absolutely love and adore. If you can get those two together, wow, along with uh, a kit that you absolutely love and adore, like, if and and let's say I got okay, so my one of my favorite kits of all time, uh, let's say Joanna Kazmerzak. Some of these sculpting artists do paint their own work and do the first prototype. So if there was a Lulu out there that was sculpted and painted by Joanna Kazmerzak, and it was one of the prototype babies, I mean, let's just even if it wasn't used as a prototype, let's just say that alone like yeah worth thousands of dollars thousands and thousands of dollars i'm sure um same with bonnie brown like if i could get a hold of a bonnie brown let's say uh, saskia by bonnie brown if it was painted by her absolutely so it all just depends on the artists involved in the prototype it depends on the sculpt um it all just depends on the baby, you guys, and it depends on the collector. If if you're the type of collector who, let's say, you wanted to buy a full body silicone doll, and maybe um, that that silicone doll was poured by um, the artist and it broke on the first mold, and there was only one of that doll. If you're one of those collectors that wants to have a very one-of-a-kind kit that nobody else has and then it was you know painted by the sculpting artist or by a really well-known silicone artist and it was one of a kind and it was the only one in the whole wide world yeah that doll's gonna be worth thousands of dollars it will be worth it with that said though not every prototype artist is some grand artist so um sometimes if you are really good friends with a sculpting artist and she knows that you're an up and coming artist and you're her friend, she may be trying to um, bump you up a little bit and there's nothing wrong with that. Lifting our friends up is great, but she may ask you to be a prototype artist just to give you a chance out there to show your work, to show what you can do. And being a prototype artist doesn't mean that you're always a a grand artist you may be a newer up-and-coming artist in the community and you may know a lot of people that are in the artistry and in the reborn community you may know people who have already um, become very well known oh i'm so glad these pants did not shrink sorry i i washed all these clothes i always wash clothes before they go home on my babies and I was terrified that these pants had, sh um, they're 100% cotton. I was afraid that they shrunk and they wouldn't fit. So anywho, but uh, being prototype doesn't always mean that you are a super advanced artist. Let's just say that. You may not be a super advanced artist. Um, so, you know, you just got to do your research. I've had people say, hey, I have this doll that's done by a prototype artist and I'm not sure if it's worth uh, $3,000. And I've I've looked at the work and it may be that it's an older doll too, or it's been passed around, it's pre-loved, it's had a lot of mamas, and maybe it's just gotten older and had some wear and tear, I don't know. But just because it's a prototype doesn't always mean it's worth like $3,000, okay? You kind of have to just look at it, what shape is it in, um, do you love the artists or the artists people that you really love and admire and you want the dolls in your collection? Is it a one of a kind doll? Is it a sculpt that you like? There are so many factors to take into that, but just know just because somebody claims to be a prototype artist, maybe they got asked one time by a friend to do a prototype. It doesn't mean that all of their work, because I will notice this too, once somebody's asked to do a prototype, they can then use that title as prototype artist and um, they will then increase the price of all of their dolls at that point. I'm not even sure if these are too dark. I'm not sure, but we're going to put these on her and just see. Do they have, they match up to the lemons. So 
um, just the color of this outfit is a little different. Um, but it doesn't always mean that all of their work is deserving of um, the price increase. They may uh, increase their dolls to thousands of dollars for vinyl dolls. So um, you just have to kind of look at it and, and not just always look at that um, wording, that prototype artist title. You may just want to look at the work. You have to look at the doll and be like, is the painting worth it? Is is the kit worth it? Am I the type of collector that only collects, you know, super well-known pieces of work and super high-end dolls? Um, you know, is this worth it to me? Because I've had talks with friends and they were like, uh, I'm not paying uh, thousands of dollars for a vinyl doll, no matter what. I don't care who painted it or who sculpted it. Um, I'd rather put that towards a silicone doll, right? Some people would rather collect silicone. Some people don't love silicone. They don't, they're worried about how fragile they are and they're, and it's not their thing. So my take on it is you just have to know what kind of a collector you are. You have to know what you actually want in your collection, what works for you, what kind of dolls are you trying to collect, what is your collection supposed to look like. It's hard as a collector to know all those things in the beginning. There's a lot of trial and error to collecting. You will probably buy a lot of dolls, sell a lot of dolls, buy a lot more dolls, and then figure out what it is that you love and um, want to collect and then you will narrow down your collection. Just know that that can take years of collecting to figure out. These are so cute. I have to leave those on and it it just matches. It does match so cute. Um, matches this color here. So I'm going to leave that on. Um, we are going to roll with that one. With that said, you guys take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Take care of those beautiful babies no matter what babies you have. And I will see you guys on the next video. Bye guys. I'm going to pick you up and hold you because you are just so stinking cute. Thank you.